End Time Attacks on Sleep, Part 2. Um, <clears throat> I feel compelled to do another video uh, as an add-on to the last one that I did there because, um, first and foremost, I didn't cover all the different subjects that I wanted to cover because I was a little bit out of it. <clears throat> but secondly, I'm very surprised by the reaction that I got from people. Um, kind of neat to see so many people responding but kind of sad to know that so many of us are struggling with this. I have deer flies all over the place right now. Excuse me if you're hearing lots of buzzing. Um, <clears throat> they're very active right now. This is in the evening. Normally I go for walks in the morning so that the, I don't have the bug issue. But um, the point that I forgot to make, the whole point of the going to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 comparing those of us that are saved we are awake we can see what's going on we can see the signs of the times as it were we can look and we can say wow you know uh, the wars and rumors of wars the pestilence and the and the famines and things coming uh, knowing what a lot a lot of what's going on and come on boy the dog stopping in front of me there and um, you know we can see these things we're awake we're spiritually awake where the lost world out there, they're just completely asleep. They think that things are going to get better. They don't see any danger to America. They think that Russia's losing the war, you know, all this different stuff. And those of us that are awake to this whole thing, you know, it's, we're just, our mouths are hanging open and I can't believe it's going like this. And uh, just crazy, the amount of stuff that's happening. And so spiritually, there's a thing of being asleep Certainly. Um, but there's a physical. There's what I was trying to say by that video, and I never did make that point. I went off on a bunch of other things, didn't get back to that point. But my question, the whole purpose of the video, we know the spiritual asleep thing, but is there a physical connection to it? Those of us who are awake are literally awake throughout the night um, because we're seeing what's going on. And, you know, you kind of, uh, it's distressing and you think about it. You know, I'm not, I'm not laying in bed at night, you know, biting my fingernails and, oh, what's going to happen now? The, the boogeyman's going to get me or anything. No. Um, but what I am doing is I'm, I'm thinking about a lot of things and I'm thinking about what should I preach, what should I teach. Uh, and so... You know, some people say, well, it's, it's stress-related. Brother Brian, you, you know, you just have so much stress in your life from the ministry and everything else. Yeah, that's there. I'll, I'll admit to that, certainly. Um, there's some stress. Uh, but it's more than that. Um, and, you know, people said, well, what if it's uh, the fact that it's electronic smog? Well, that's a problem because here at this property, we don't have electricity. We are uh, not on the grid. We are completely off grid, so I don't sleep anywhere near any kind of electrical frequency. And I'm um, in northern Maine. There's not exactly a lot of 5G towers around or anything like that. So, not saying we're not at all affected here. You know, there could be some, but um, you know, uh, I don't think it's electronic smog. I don't have a cell phone, as I stated in the video there. So, it's not that I have my phone on some kind of a thing or whatever else where, you know, you're supposed to put it on the, what is it, airplane mode or something, so it's not responding to the towers. Um, that's not the case. I don't have a satellite phone. I don't have a cell phone. I don't have a smartphone. I don't have any kind of a phone here. No communication device other than prayer. I can pray. That's one thing I can do. And that does, definitely does not put off an electrical field. Boy, the flies are good. Um, so, um, and other people said, you know, what? Well, it's probably your nutrition. You just have some nutritional deficiencies. Well, that's a possibility. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm getting older. You know, I realize that. I destroyed my health for, you know, over 30 years with, you know, junk food. I was a junk food addict. Um, I won't get into all the stories of the stuff I used to eat, but... Uh, <laughs> Um, completely destroyed myself with junk food 
and I've been working very hard to get back into good nutritional health. And we eat very good now. Um, I don't eat junk food anymore. I don't drink, uh, we call it poison pop, you know, soda pop. I don't eat that or drink that stuff. I drink kombucha. It's about the only thing we drink from the store other than milk. Um, we used to get raw milk, but it was kind of iffy, the quality of it. So we stopped that for a while now and, and are doing just fine on uh, non-raw milk. But um, I don't think it's nutritional completely. It could be somewhat nutritional. And of course, I, I understand that there are certain types of teas, herbal teas that you can drink that are, you know, better for at night. You know, that you can get sleepy time teas and all these other types of teas and things. Um, and, you know, they have different herbs in them and things. And, you know, we have all the books on herbology and everything. I can't, I don't memorize that stuff, so I can't just recite things off the top of my head um, about what herbs help with you, you know, with insomnia. I don't know. Again, you can look into that stuff. Um, I know some of you said that you're on sleep medication, taking pills and things. I would warn against that. And I know, you know, but you don't understand, Brian, I have to in order to be able to function and things. I know. I used to be on blood pressure, blood, bleh, blood pressure medication. Come on, Luther. And, um, and I got off of that. And I don't have any blood pressure issues anymore. Um, cure it naturally. And it's not that, well, I still have blood pressure problems, but I just kind of pretend that I don't and just eat herbs or something or, you know, no, that's not it. I don't have blood, high blood pressure. I feel completely different. I don't have the migraine headaches that I used to get just all of the time. Um, a big part of it was getting rid of the white sugar out of my diet. So a little bit of advice there. So um, again, you know, I'm saying this not just for myself, but for you out there. Because, you know, so many people responded to this whole thing. And, you know, so my method of figuring things out is, okay, uh, first and foremost, the Bible says, if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we're chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Um, and I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that says that. And so for me... I judge myself. I start out and I say, okay, um, screen time. Was I on the internet? Did it mess up my melatonin levels, the blue light and things that comes from a screen, computer screen? No, you know, I was a couple hours before I go to bed, um, I've been off the screen thing. You know, purposefully read paper-based books before I go to bed. It helps me to kind of get sleepy and get tired and, and, um, and so, uh, okay, I did that right. Did I eat anything, any kind of junk food that would have kept me awake? Well, you know, I, because it was my birthday, I got some ice cream, um, good stuff, expensive stuff, you know, which is why I don't eat a whole lot of it because the only thing that's good out there is, you know, fairly expensive, but there could be some, you know, white sugar in it or whatever, or they'll say cane sugar, but, I've seen people trying to say there's white cane sugar, which is weird. But, um, so, you know, I go through the list is what I'm saying. I judge myself. And if I go through the whole list, it wasn't that I was, you know, spending a lot of too much time on the internet. I didn't eat the wrong thing. I don't have some kind of a unconfessed sin that I've been messing around. Lord's chastening me. Um, you know, uh, did I do some kind of a video that it's making the spiritual realm angry and I'm getting a counterattack, spiritual warfare type of thing, in other words? And you go through the whole list, and if at the end you say, okay, I, don't, I can't figure out what's going on, then that only leaves one possibility, and that is that it's a spiritual attack. Um, that just just coming out of the, you know, nowhere. And that's why I'm saying I believe that there's a tie-in spiritual tie-in of course to first thessalonians chapter 5 um that we are um we're awake to what's going on in the world and therefore we're not sleeping um there's definitely a physical or excuse me a spiritual but i think it could actually be a physical tie-in as well 
And, um, you know, the Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day in Psalm 7. And, you know, that if the wicked doesn't turn, then God is prepared for him the instruments of death. And I actually have a sermon on that. Get off of the lens. These bugs. Oh. <laughs> the joys of living in the north. You know, summertime in Pennsylvania, when I was growing up, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, um, you know, we might get some mosquitoes occasionally or something, but uh, I don't remember that many bugs growing up. It was hot, hotter there, down there, than it was, than it is up here. But we didn't have the bugs. And I know my one older brother, he'd go to Alaska, and um, he'd talk about, he knew some people up there and everything, and he'd go up there to visit them, and he'd say about, oh, the mosquitoes are just so terrible. And I used to think, how could mosquitoes be worse up north than they are here, you know, in, in a more southerly state? And then I came to Maine and I found out. Uh, we had a property in Littleton uh, when we first moved here, and boy, the conditions were just right to produce mosquitoes, I think. <laughs> and um, man, if I could have made money off of mosquitoes, I'd have been a millionaire. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it was bad. I mean, I went to sell the property and a realtor friend of ours, um, he was back in there and we're talking and everything. And he said, man, the mosquitoes are bad back here. He was born and raised in the area. He said, I mean, this is probably one of the worst properties I've ever been on for mosquitoes. He said, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, um, but you know, here we have the, we do get mosquitoes, but we have Sand gnats, we have black flies for a little bit, um, mm -hmm. but they go away. But then the, the deer flies this year are, as you can see, they're crazy. They're just flying all around. They're actually more attracted to darker collars. So see, back in the past, you know, my hair was dark, like a dark brown, almost black in collar, color. And, um, but now it's starting to go so much gray that the, the black flies aren't attracted to it as much. <laughs> they're going after my, camera right here which is black so thank you camera for being a decoy but you're probably hearing a lot of so sorry about that but getting back to the subject um what can i say to you um suffering if we suffer we shall also reign with him there's suffering that comes upon you as a christian a lot of churches, they try to make Christianity all about life enhancement. It's all, you know, you have a Jesus-shaped hole in your soul and you can, in your heart or something, and you know, and get Jesus, have Jesus come into your heart and everything, everything will get better and you'll have love and all this other stuff. Uh, they don't understand biblical New Testament love. Um, love comes with a very high price. Um, yes, we love him because he first loved us. That's true. Very true. But uh, love is also hatred of evil. And you will love the things that God loves and hate the things that God hates. And God hates sin. Um, and you'll hate it. That's why the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans chapter 7, he talked about the struggle that he has with his flesh. And he, and he just struggles with this thing and struggles. And uh, it upsets him. And he says, you know, the good thing that I would do, you know, that do I not, essentially, and the, the evil thing that I wouldn't do, that's what I do. Paraphrasing a little bit there, but that's the gist of it. And, you know, he's frustrated with his sin. He's frustrated with um, struggling. And I know a lot of us get frustrated. And um, it's, try, it's easy to try to blame somebody else for your problems. It's easy to try to blame, you know, different things in this world um, but you know when it comes down to it you have to blame yourself you have to look at yourself and examine your own self judge mm -hmm. yourself and you know if you're eating junk food if you're on medication and doing whatever kind of things like that look into it look into natural health look into ways to you know get better sleep and um, you say well brother I've tried everything and I don't know what to do I just wake up and I pray and I pray and there's, there isn't anything I can do. It just gets worse and worse. And a lot of you have been saying that you get these horrible nightmares. I, I know. And uh, 
but just weird, horrible stuff that I think, I wake up and I say, Lord, I'm not into that stuff. I would never even think about doing that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to even have those things in my mind, Lord. I don't know where it's coming from. Um, it's part of suffering. Part of the reality of being a Christian. And, uh, but you know what? The Bible also says we're accomplished about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Uh, knowing that the things that are accomplished in me are accomplished in us, I think it says that the same things are accomplished in our brethren. Um, in other words, the, the things that we're going through, um, you know, there's, there hath no temptation uh, taken you, but such as is common to man. God will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able to bear. But will, will with the temptation make a way to escape? There's a way to escape the temptations that come upon us in this life. And uh, so be encouraged. Um, you know, again, if you feel led to, to write anything in the comment section, just saying, hey, everybody out there, you know, uh, let's pray for each other. Lift each other up in prayer. See, all the people that posted the comments on the last video and just say, Lord, all, all of them, I can't, don't know them all by name. Not all the screen names are saying somebody's name, you know, so you can't say by name, but just, Lord, all these different brethren out there, help us to be strong in this weird time that we find ourselves in, in this uh, end times, these last days. And uh, it's a beautiful thing to think about, that uh, the day is going to come when we're going to go to be with each other in heaven. And uh, I always think about it, you know. I get start getting down and I start to really get kind of sad and whatever. And I start thinking about it and I think, what's it going to be like when the Lord says, come up hither. And the body of Christ, the dead in Christ, shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Up there in the clouds, you see these clouds up there like that. Someday, be like John and you look up there into those clouds and you see a door open in heaven and he hears a voice as it were a trumpet. You know, the trump of God. Hmm, the trump of God shall sound in your King James Bible. A lot of the new versions change it to trumpet. That's a mistake. It's trump. It's the voice of the trumpet, not the trumpet. Okay, that's a very important distinction there. That's why John, when he hears a voice, he says, as it were a trumpet talking with me. It's a beautiful, melodious voice. Huh. And uh, we'll hear that beautiful voice. Come up hither. And immediately, call it up. Get up there into the clouds. And uh, looking around, you'll see me. Hopefully I'll see you. And um, get there. Hey brother, hey sister. Oh, wow, can you believe it? It finally happened. <laughs> Man, this is great. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And, uh, you know, we're there getting all excited, happy to see one another, meet one another finally, and, you know, um, be great. And all of a sudden, uh, we look over and there's Jesus. That's going to be the best part of all. Get there and you look and you just say, you know, we'll be bowing down and looking at each other saying, he doesn't look at any, anything at all like the guy in the paintings. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> uh, he looks completely different than him. So um, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Brethren, we're going through some rough stuff. And um, going, you know, we have to just kind of get through it, you know. Uh, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with, with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Romans chapter 8 talks about that. It's going to be an amazing time. I have some raspberries here to eat. Red raspberries. So, thank you Lord for these berries. But, so that's going to be it. I just wanted to make a quick little video here just to kind of part two about that and say what I was trying to say is that the lost world, you talk to them, well, I don't have any problem sleeping. You know, you think things are getting bad in the world? No, it's been bad before. <laughs> uh, well, it's going to be a lot worse. 
this time. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not into all that doom and gloom stuff, that fear porn and whatever. Okay. Show you some, show you some uh, beautiful flowers back here. Right there. There's somebody cruising by. One other thing that I have to correct. A uh, great heresy has been spoken on my channel. Um, or not spoken, but in the comments. It's not a moose, or it's not a, uh, that track I showed in the last video. A lot of people are saying uh, some kind of a deer or something like that. It's not a deer, okay? Deer hoof prints, they don't get very big. You know, maybe, what, that big? Maybe at the most or something? Not very big. Um, White-tailed deer is what we have here. And I was in Montana, they had mule deer out there. And um, so they get bigger, but uh, not that big. Um, some people said, is it an elk? We don't have elk in Northern Maine, uh, no elk. Uh, a couple of you Mainers, you just had it like that. Easy to figure out, it's a moose. Um, we actually did have caribou in Northern Maine for a little while, but uh, that was many years before I came to Maine. And unfortunately, most of those are gone now. I guess they're, all of them are gone. And um, so, well, yes, it was a moose track. So everybody had thought it was an elk track or a deer track. Uh, no, it was a moose. So just to give you the answer there. But um, again, thank you to everybody out there for your views. Thank you for your subscriptions to this channel. Um, I am not monetized, so it's not a big thing to me. You know, you subscribe or don't subscribe. But, you know, it's nice to get feedback from people and things and see that people are actually watching the videos that I take time to put out. Um, I, the main part of my work is doing studies and actual sermons from the scriptures where we turn in the Bible. I read from the Bible. Uh, these walk and talk things are just, you know, there's a lot of times I have sermons prepared and I try to get the sermon out. And there's ideas that I have that come to me on a daily basis. And I think, oh, I should talk about that in the video. And then I end up forgetting the point and whatever. So thought to myself, maybe I should start doing these walk and talk things more, get some more thoughts out and point people to the actual sermons and the preaching. So um, that's why I do what I do. So that will be it. And uh, you can see the beautiful fireweed over there, the pink flowers. Um, we're going to be making tea from the leaves of that. And uh, maybe I'll film the process I don't know we'll see about that so that will be it sorry about the bugs hopefully they didn't bug you too much this message has been bugged <laughs> but uh, sorry about all the bugs flying around but it's just the reality of living here in a northern environment I will say this another little interesting mm -hmm. trivia fact and that is that um, I heard years ago about you know you move to the north and at first, it's really bad, you know, the first couple of years. The bugs really, you know, when they, when they bite you, whatever else there, it's really bad. It swells up and it's really itching and oh, it's terrible. And then after you're there for a number of years, you kind of get immune to it. And I thought, I don't know if that's true or not. Well, I've been in Maine now since 2013. So, um, what is that, 11 years? Something like that and uh, officially moved in January of 2014, but we were coming up and getting land and things uh, in 2013. So technically it's, it's about 11 years, but um, I can say I'm pretty much immune to the mosquitoes at least. Um, so just another little interesting trivia thing about living in the North, but that will be it. And uh, thank you to everybody out there for your views. Please hit the like button, all that stuff. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.